Welcome to this educational video about fatigue after an injury. This educational video is brought to you by Cheshire and Merseyside Rehabilitation Network. If you have any further questions about the content of this educational video, please contact your treating team who will be more than happy to help you. Other helpful resources include the Headway website and the Brain Charity website. If you put these into Google, they should come up. So what is fatigue? After we engage in a mental or physical activity, we may feel fatigued. This is our body telling us to take a rest. However, after an injury, especially to the brain, people can experience pathological fatigue. This is fatigue that can be present most of the time and it may also not go away after we rest. This type of fatigue can have a big impact on the activities that people want to engage in. Fatigue is one of the most common, difficult and persistent symptoms following a brain injury. Many people that experience chronic fatigue said that they felt unprepared for how it would affect them. They also said that they felt there was a lack of understanding about it. People also feel it's not always given enough attention by clinical staff, their family or their caregivers. Therefore, if you feel that you are struggling with chronic fatigue and no one seems to understand, you are not alone in feeling this way. So do ask for help from your care team and from the people around you. Persistent pathological or chronic fatigue is greater in intensity and duration and is not necessarily helped by rest and can have a profound impact on a person's functioning and their quality of life. Fatigue is individual to each and every person. So everyone will feel it in different ways. They'll feel it at different times and at different intensities. Different things will make different people's fatigue worse. So you can't compare yourself to others and you also can't compare yourself to how you were pre-injury. So how does it affect people? As we've said, fatigue is different for different people. Some people say that it is like an overwhelming tiredness, which stops them from completing normal activities of daily living. Other people say that they feel exhausted, lacking in energy, weak, unable to motivate themselves, or that they're just really, really sleepy. Fatigue can be described as an overwhelming feeling of weariness. It can also be unrelated to any of the activities that you may have been doing. A difficult thing for people to deal with is that fatigue can be present just because. Again, this is really, really common after an injury to the brain. So fatigue can affect so many aspects of who you are. It can affect how you think, how you feel and what you do. Have you noticed any differences in how you think, feel or behave when you experience high levels of fatigue? Whatever your answer is, I can tell you that this is really normal. Can you bring to mind any of the thoughts that you've had when you felt high levels of fatigue? Some people can feel really frustrated or upset that they can't do as much as they did before. This can make people sometimes want to try to do lots of activities to catch up if they're feeling like they have a little bit of energy. But if they can't do everything that they want to do because of their fatigue, then this can really impact their mood. Therefore, fatigue can not only affect what you're able to do, but it can also affect how you feel and the thoughts that you have. This is because these are all linked. Your thoughts will affect how you feel about yourself, the world and others, and this will then have an impact on how you behave or what you do. Research studies have shown that there are many different factors or things that can make people more vulnerable to experiencing fatigue. All of these can also affect how a person responds to fatigue that they're already experiencing. So some of these factors involved include side effects of medication that you may be taking, a poor diet, 
reduce stamina, different social roles, so different roles that you yourself have to engage in on a daily basis, physical difficulties, thinking difficulties, other medical conditions that you may have, the environment that you're in, anxiety or worries that you're having currently, impaired sensation, depression or low mood, sleep difficulties, individual ways of coping, pain, hormonal changes and cognitive difficulties. So you may find that you've none of these risk factors and you still feel really fatigued. Again, this is your personal experience and it is completely normal. So how do we recognize fatigue? How do you know when someone is fatigued or when fatigue is starting to build up for somebody? So some signs that other people have said may include their stomach feeling really sick, they find that they're yawning a lot more. They find that they're losing their attention and they're also losing their concentration. They might find that they're becoming more irritable quicker or more often. They report that their limbs might feel really heavy or that their eyes might feel really heavy. They've also said that their head might feel really fuzzy or that they find that they're fidgeting a lot more. People have also said that their eyes can feel really blurry. Again, none of these may apply to you and you may have your own experience of feeling fatigued and it may present in a completely different way. So how do you know when you are fatigued? If no examples come to mind, is there anyone close to you that you can ask? Maybe they've noticed that you say or you do something when you're more fatigued. It's really good to check in with people to see if they have noticed anything. You can then make a note of these somewhere so that then you know what makes you feel more fatigued if you're having trouble recognising it yourself. Some common complaints. So there are many things that you may find that make you more fatigued now after your injury that didn't make you fatigued previously. So common activities other people have reported that they find to be more tiring now is driving, trying to concentrate when there are loads of distractions, working at a computer in a busy environment, or even just watching this video. Managing fatigue is not about taking it away. It's about taking control of it. So fatigue is not something that we're trying to cure, but each person can learn how to manage their own fatigue. When you know what triggers your fatigue and how to respond to it, then you can feel better able to manage your fatigue. Then you'll feel better able to cope with your fatigue and that will hopefully make you feel more in control of your life. So some people find it helpful to rate their fatigue level out of 10 before and after activities. So you can see on this scale, one is not at all fatigued, five is moderate fatigue, and then 10 is extremely fatigued at the top of the scale. So this will help you to see if there are some activities that make you very, very fatigued and others that don't. It is important that you know which activities make you more tired so that you can plan your routine around them. You can then set realistic goals for yourself and this will also help with your mental health. For example, if you wake in the morning and you think about having your morning cup of tea. Before you make it, you may feel that you are a one out of 10 on the fatigue scale. You pick your favorite mug, you pop the kettle on, you find the tea bags, you pour the water, you let it brew, you remove the bag, add some sugar, add the milk, and sit down to enjoy your brew. Now you think about it and you rate your fatigue again and you find that you're a three out of 10. Let's take another example. If you think about doing a food shop, so this is a much bigger task than making a cup of tea and it has way more steps involved, like planning what you want, getting there, picking out all the items, 
adding all the amounts in your head to make sure you have enough money and then some. So here you may find that if you do manage to complete this activity, by the time you're leaving the shop, you're hitting an eight out of 10 or higher. Therefore, when you're planning your week, you may wanna ask somebody to come and help you with that activity or think of ways around it, like ordering your shopping online. So other tips to manage your fatigue. So these are some tips that you may find helpful. The first is to try and get a good night's sleep. So trying to have a regular routine, getting up every day at the same time and going to bed every night at the same time. So if this is something you're struggling with though, please contact your care team so that they can help you. Avoid having caffeinated drinks or large meals right before going to bed. Take rest breaks throughout the day and also while doing activities that take a long time to complete. So this can be really helpful when you're planning your week, make sure to plan in rest breaks to keep your fatigue at bay. So it's all about planning really, plan activities and rest breaks for the day and for the week ahead of time to make sure that you get a good balance. It's important as well to prioritize the activities that are important to you, the ones that you need to do or the ones that you really want to do. And the other activities, if you can, you can delegate to some other people. So do ask for help. Another important one is the pace at which you do activities. So don't rush if you don't have to. Take things at a speed that suits you. It's also really important to organize your home and your work areas so that the things you need to use frequently are easy to reach. Drink plenty of fluids, particularly water, and eat a healthy and balanced diet. But please do seek advice from your doctor before you do this. It's really important to try and do some gentle exercise regularly even when you don't feel like it. But again, please seek advice from your doctor first to see what exercises you can be doing. This one is much easier said than done, but do try to come to some level of acceptance that for now you're currently experiencing fatigue, but that you can control some of its side effects on your life. Finally, if you're experiencing low mood, anxiety or depression in addition to your fatigue, please contact your doctor or care team for health and advice. You are not alone in feeling this way and there are people that can help and support you. So a quick summary, fatigue after an injury is really common and you are not alone in feeling this way. It's also really important to know what your triggers are, what makes you fatigued. You can then plan around these and make sure you've scheduled rest breaks. This will help you feel more independent and it'll also help you feel more in control of your fatigue and your life. A big important one is don't overdo it. It's really easy to think that you're feeling up to things and trying to do lots of things at once, only to find then that your fatigue massively increases and you've to spend three days in bed. Plan your week ahead. Make sure you take things easy and don't overdo it. In this way, you'll find that you'll get everything you need to do done, but at a slower and steady pace rather than trying to do it all at once and then ending up with really high levels of fatigue that can really impact, impact your mood. So thank you for listening to this video. If you do have any questions about your own fatigue or anything else discussed in this video, please contact your care team for more information. They will be more than happy to help and support you.